Hi, I'm Sinead Rafferty, Portfolio Specialist at NAB Asset Management, and I'm joined by Dr. Susan Gosling, Head of Investments at MLC. Welcome, Susan. Thank you, Sinead. Susan, 2018 saw the worst share market falls that we've seen since 2008. What happened? The fragilities underlying the prolonged strong returns of the past few years became more apparent in the final quarter of 2018. Prior to that, real returns had for six or seven years been well in excess of long-term averages. These returns rested on the foundation of ultra-low interest rates and quantitative easing. Low rates and easy money pushed investors up the risk spectrum, making all assets expensive at the same time. During the March quarter last year, we saw the first challenge to the perception that strong return environment can persist. Stronger than expected US wages data resulted in a sharp interruption to the US share market's relentless rise. Investor behavior has to some extent shifted towards selling the rally. This is in stark contrast to what's been a persistent buy the dip mentality over the past decade. However, a sustained shift in investor expectations requires repeated confirmations that the future is not as rosy as previously presumed. In the December quarter, a combination of monetary policy concerns, global trade worries, and related concerns about global growth, plus the US budget impasse, more clearly shifted investor expectations. Were the market impacts in 2018 similar to what we saw in 2008? In 2008, when equity markets declined, government bond yields fell sharply and returns surged, providing a great risk offset. But last year, bond yields were not an effective source of diversification. While bond yields did decline in the December quarter, for the year as a whole, they rose. This confirms what we already suspected, that the only reliable way to limit downside risk is to accept lower returns. Our understanding of this reality is the reason our real return funds, the Inflation Plus portfolios, have been positioned so defensively. What was the most important change? The pivotal change has been that the progressive tightening of monetary conditions is starting to have an impact. The US has raised interest rates nine times over the past three years and is stepping up quantitative tightening. Additionally, the ECB is running down quantitative easing and the Bank of Japan has now reduced asset purchases. Title liquidity will be particularly challenging given that not only is US Treasury bond issuance rising, but also there's a very significant jump in the volume of US investment grade debt maturing in 2019. In light of this, what does the future hold? While it can take a long time, the fundamentals will ultimately drive market outcomes. Asset prices that are high suggest low future return potential. While there are some exceptions, such as emerging market equities, our assessment is that asset prices are mostly not cheap and in some cases are expensive, particularly US equities and nominal bonds. We suspect that many investors remain over-optimistic and vulnerable to misperception about the risks that lie just beneath the surface. But the path of returns that unfolds will depend on how investor expectations change. A trade deal between the US and China that is favorable to economic growth is still possible. The argument over the Mexico border war will be resolved one way or another. We also know that the US Fed is data dependent and that while US economic growth may be slowing, it remains robust. So a positive mindset could persist across global financial markets. And we've seen some of that during January in response to soothing words from the Fed and hopes for a trade deal. However, the reality is that liquidity is tightening. The rise in equity market volatility is a reminder of the vulnerabilities that have accumulated in the financial system. And we also know that the Fed understands the imperative to build policy options for the next economic downturn. Indeed, the Fed under the leadership of Jerome Powell has partly removed the lower for longer bias that has distorted the outlook for US interest rates. This is a very important change for all risk asset markets. The presumption of lower for longer interest rates has been a core driver of stretch valuations across asset classes. Even a small movement in long-term discount interest rates can have a pronounced effect on the valuation of all assets. Have you made any changes to the portfolios in light of this? Following the equity market decline, we have cautiously added to our equity allocation for Inflation Plus. 
but we continue to believe that it will be difficult for the strong returns of past years to resume and that significant vulnerabilities and downside risks remain. As we've said before, we are at the beginning of the end of an era. The tailwind of abundant liquidity has turned into more of a headwind. We expect that this will continue to challenge asset prices inflated by the presumption of low rates and easy money. Thanks for your time, Susan. Thanks, Sinead.